In today's video, I'll be taking a look at a brand new model of studio monitor, the T8V from Adam Audio. You may not be surprised at my conclusions, but I think you should be surprised at the price. All of that coming up. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now I've been extremely fortunate in receiving the very first pair of these studio monitors in Australia, the Adam T8Vs. And in this video, I'm gonna be running through all of the information you need about them, as well as giving you my honest opinion. Now I will say up front that these monitors have been loaned to me for the purposes of this review, but I have not been required to say anything specific, nor has this video been reviewed before release by anyone but myself and I'm not being paid in any way for this video. In other words, this is my true and honest opinion. Now I'd also like to say up front that for around about the last seven or eight years I've been using the KRK Rocket 8 monitors and during the course of this video I may refer to them because they are my point of reference and you may have heard them also but this is not a versus video that simply wouldn't be fair. Now with all of that said Let's start off by looking at the specs of these studio monitors. So the T8Vs are active near-field monitors, meaning you won't need an amp, they plug straight into your audio interface. The 8 in the name refers to the 8-inch polypropylene woofer and the V stands for vertical, as they are designed to be used in an upright position. Now along with that 8-inch woofer, we have the distinctive UART ribbon tweeter. This is something you won't see on competitor monitors and Adam claim that the design gives a greater range with less distortion. This these monitors are bi-amped, meaning that the woofer and the tweeter have separate amplifiers, 70 watt for the woofer and 20 watt for the tweeter. In terms of range, you get a respectable frequency response of 36 hertz to 25 kilohertz. More on that low end later. There are two switches for a 2 dB cut or boost on high or low frequencies, and you can connect with an unbalanced RCA or a balanced XLR, as I did in this review. Last Lastly, if these monitors are controversial in any way, it would be with their large rear firing base reflex port, but more on that later. Now, you could have gotten all of that from their website, so the question is, what did I think? Well, the very first thing I noticed was a lack of noise from these monitors. In the past, I'd been used to hearing a little bit of a hiss from the tweeter, especially when I had it up at higher volumes. But with these, you have to get your ear really close to the tweeter indeed to be able to hear that hiss. That was really pleasing, and it speaks to me of really quality electronics inside. And it's not that it was really terrible with my current monitors, but I did notice this difference right away, and I was really pleased to hear that or not hear it. So the first thing I did was fire up a mix that I'd been working on for the past couple of days on my current monitors. And I've probably heard this mix at least 50 times in recent days, if not more. So I was feeling very familiar with it. And then something very scary happened. You see, I've got some backing vocals in this mix, which all feed through to a bus. And that bus was ever so slightly clipping. Now I'd never noticed it before as I'd been mixing this song but the very first time I heard it with these monitors, my ears picked up on it. Scary indeed, because it made me wonder what other small things I'd missed previously using my current monitors. So that really spoke to me about the clarity of the mids and highs with these monitors. So I could definitely hear a greater amount of separation between the instruments, especially on the mid to high frequencies, but it was the low end, the bass, that had me really excited. You see, although my current monitors are eight inch woofers as well, I knew over the years I always had to check my mixes on a system with a subwoofer, because that subwoofer always revealed something about the low end which I just hadn't heard on my monitors. But with these, I knew I would not have to do that anymore. It sounds absolutely wonderful. And I don't mean hyped in any way, I just mean that I felt that I could hear a greater range of low end frequencies and it was balanced across those frequencies. It made me want to listen to my mix over and over again and I even ran out to the rest of the house and grabbed other members of the family to have a listen but, in honesty, they didn't really care. But I just loved it. 
So the next thing I'd like to discuss is the rear firing base port. If we turn this monitor around here, you can see the base port just at the top here. Now some people say this is a problem because if this is flat up against a wall, then those base frequencies can't freely exit that port. But I wonder if this problem really stems from people thinking about hi-fi speakers because with studio monitors, I don't really see how this can occur. First of all, you need to plug your cables into the back, your power cable and also your connections from your audio interface. So that's gonna create probably at least a few centimeters of gap at the back. Secondly, if you're using these monitors correctly, you're gonna have them angled in towards your listening position, hopefully trying to create an equilateral triangle. And that creates even more space at the back of the monitor. And really, I feel that because of this, it's not really a problem. And as I say, the low end did sound really good to me. But it is a consideration for you if you really feel you must have them very close and flat up against your wall. So talking about space and position, you really do need to consider the size of these monitors before you purchase them. They have a depth of around about 33.5 centimeters, a width of 25 centimeters, and a height of 40 centimeters. Now I prefer to have my monitors on stands, but if you do have them on a desktop and they're angled in, you will find they do take quite a bit of space. And if you're in a small studio or have a small desk, this may be an important consideration consideration for you, so do take note of that. So do I like these monitors? Well, I absolutely love them and they're definitely going on my shopping list. And it means that I've been able to remove that subwoofer which was previously on my shopping list. So I weirdly feel like I'm actually saving money. Hmm. Now talking of money, when you consider the heritage of Adam Audio and their great reputation, and the fact that for some of their monitors you can actually spend thousands of dollars per monitor. You'll be pleased to hear that these ones are actually really nicely priced for the home studio market and they compete very well against similar spec monitors. Now the price does vary around the world so I want you to check in the description down below to see how much they cost in your region. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's helped you to decide whether these are monitors you'd like to purchase in the future. Let me know in the comments down below what you think and tell me about the monitors you've been using and why you might consider up grading. I also want to send a big thanks out to Chris and Boz from Federal Audio here in Australia who shipped these monitors out to me for this review. Now if you did like this video make sure you hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that it should show this video to other people. If you didn't like this video make sure you hit the dislike button twice and do it with an angry face that really helps. If you like this kind of content all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing then please do make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos and I'll see you in the next video.